Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. I currently have a backpack full of 24mm Swiss Tank Buxa 41 magazines, because we have a Tank Buxa 41. So I'm here at the Morphe Auction House today, because they are going to be selling this in their upcoming Fall of 2018 Firearms Auction. These things are really scarce in the US. I think there's only one other one extant in the US, and this one's in great condition. But the question is, what the heck is a Tank Buxa 41? Well, uh, development of this actually started when the Swiss government bought a batch of, t of uh, 1939 pattern tanks from Czechoslovakia. And the problem was, these tanks were nominally armed with 20mm cannons, and the Swiss figured that's cool and all, but we want a gun in our tanks that's better than the guns that everyone else has in their tanks. So they sent a request down to the, the factory at Waffenfabrik Bern to say, we want a bigger, better gun. And the director of the factory was one Adolf Furrer, whose name you will recognize if you've been watching Forgotten Weapons, because we have videos on a bunch of his other stuff. And if you do recognize his name, you already know how this thing works, because Adolf Furrer never met a toggle lock he didn't like. At any rate, what he designed is a toggle locked action based on the Swiss LMG 25 light machine gun, uh, except this one is chambered for the 24 by 139 millimeter cartridge. So here's the actual breech action of this thing. It is a gigantic toggle lock. We have a charging handle that slides off the side here and pivots around. That's cool, because that gives you a bunch of leverage, which you're going to need to cycle this thing manually. That's a big problem when you get to a gun this big. If you remember guns like the Lati in paltry 20mm have things like crank handles and chains to help you get some mechanical advantage to pull the bolt back. Well, this is a short recoil operated toggle locked gun, which means in addition to pulling the toggle open, you also have to pull the barrel back against its recoil spring. That's hefty. So. Fur actually had some. Fur was a clever designer. He was no idiot. He may have been a little obsessed with toggle locking, but what he did on this gun is design this cool system where uh, you have a, a six-round box magazine here, by the way, and this is our our dummy cartridge. Ouch. That's 24 by 138 millimeter, uh, and the way this thing worked is when you fired the sixth round, it would come back, lock open, and actually automatically eject the magazine, and, and stay locked open. So that all you had to do was put a new loaded magazine in the gun. You didn't have to manipulate this charging handle every time you ran a six round magazine empty. That's, that's good thinking. At the beginning I mentioned that this was designed for use in a Swiss light tank, and you might have noticed that this is not a light tank. Well, in addition to mounting it in the tanks, which by the way, are a slightly different configuration than this. In order to make them fit well, they basically rotated the gun up 90 degrees in the tank, and the magazine came in the top. But in addition to that, they realized, you know, this would make a pretty nice anti-tank gun for the infantry. So they set them up with these wheeled mounts, uh, also with support bipod or tripod legs here on both sides. And uh, they transport these things around behind bicycles, which is a very Swiss sort of thing to do. They ended up actually also mounting these on patrol boats for lake patrol duty. Uh, and of course they use them in fortresses, because Switzerland has nothing if not a lot of fortresses. Uh, they, they went into production, they were adopted in 1941. A grand total of 3,600, or just under 3,600 of these were manufactured by 1945. And they really were a significant part of the Swiss armament during World War II. However, being part of the Swiss armament during World War II, they were never actually used in combat. So they, they were there to provide a deterrent and a defence, and I suppose they did that successfully, along with the rest of Switzerland's defences. There you have the actual receiver markings, right on the side. Waffenfabrik Bern. Uh, this particular one is serial number 2943, and it's numbered all over the place, like you might expect. There is a safety switch on it, right there. To actually aim and fire this, it was equipped with a 2.2 power optical telescopic sight, which unfortunately we don't have on this particular one. So there was a backup, there were also iron sights. And if you've ever fired a Swiss K31 rifle, or any of the Schmidt Rubens, you'll recognize that sight right away, because that is basically 
the sight off of a 7.5 Swiss bolt action rifle, and the front sight there off the rifle to go with it. The trigger is located right in front of the right hand grasping handle. So uh, currently we don't have a magazine in, so the trigger is locked, but you pull that, pushes the bar forward, which runs a mechanical linkage, and fires the gun. However, you wouldn't fire it from this position where it's locked into the tripod. To properly set this up for use requires more than one or two guys to do it right. This thing originally had a seven-man crew, and all of those guys, by the way, were carrying backpacks full of magazines. But this whole thing, the, the gun itself weighs just, uh, weighs just under 80 kilos. I think it's 73 kilos, which is going to be something like 160 pounds uh, for just the gun, not counting the carriage. So I'll show you what you would normally do, but I can't really set this thing up by myself. So let's, let's get started, though, because we can make it look pretty cool anyway. First of all, you need to rotate this thing off its wheels. While it can be fired from the wheeled mount, we want it to be sitting on these feet, not on these rolly bits. So basically, what I need to do is depress this lever. That allows this whole wheel and leg assembly to slide out this way, which then allows me to rotate it, and I want to get this indicator notch to line up with one of these four numbers, which indicate various heights for uh, this thing to sit on its tripod assembly. Uh, this indicator latch, of course, is for the wheels. Now, once I've rotated that around, the wheels are actually quick to detach. We've got these handles, which you can pull up and allow the wheel to come off. But that takes, like, two guys holding the gun and two guys pulling the wheels off. And I'm one guy, so that's not happening. However, I can give you a bit of an idea how this thing works. If I depress this lever, and then... There we go. You can see how this comes out. Uh, at this point, the gear teeth are still engaged, so it doesn't rotate. And I'm not going to pull it out any farther, or else the whole thing will flop down, because, again, I'm one guy and I don't have someone else holding the gun up. Uh, once you get it in the right position, then... Ah, come on. Ah, there we go. Then it goes right back into place. All right, but... I can still show you the really cool part, which is this thing's all locked in place on its transit assembly. It's not supposed to move. Well, if I want to be shooting German tanks with this thing, I need it to be flexible and move. It's not an artillery piece that you zero in and then fire with a lanyard. So in order to do that, we're going to put on the shoulder stock. We have a lever back here that allows me to... Oh, yes! Now we have a free traversing gun. Isn't that cool? We can take the shoulder stock and open it up right there, slide it in, snap that on. This is a little bit muzzle heavy, unless you have a magazine in it, in which case it balances out just beautifully. So this is going to rest over my right shoulder, and then I'm looking right down the sights, hand on the trigger here, and uh, six rounds, semi-automatic fire. This thing's got a pretty beastly muzzle brake on it. And this is actually a pretty darn effective piece. This fires a 225 gram projectile at uh, between 860 and 900 meters per second. That's basically a 3500 grain projectile at 2800 to 2950 feet per second. And they had two different loadings of this. They actually had a high explosive round, and they also had an armor piercing round. What they did, because this was primarily supposed to be an anti-tank gun, uh, they had six round magazines of armor-piercing. Your high explosive ammunition that the, the gun crew was carrying, which by the way was about 25% of the total loadout, they carry like 40 rounds of, of HE and 120 rounds of uh, armor-piercing. The, the HE stuff was actually carried in a different magazine that only held five rounds, and that was to help distinguish between the two, so that you didn't accidentally mix them up and fire the wrong type of ammo at whatever your target was. So uh, that's, a, that's a lot of boom from this thing. This would do... this would go through 36 millimeters of, of perpendicular armor at 500 meters. Uh, that's, that's pretty substantial. And uh, just take a look at the muzzle brake on that sucker. That's a big muzzle brake. So these were scrapped by the Swiss fairly shortly after World War II. Apparently there was an attempt to sell a bunch of them to, I think, Ethiopia. That didn't really go anywhere. 
um, and they ended up pulling them out of service. They, they remained in the fortress uh, mounts longest. But uh, here in the United States they are, as I said at the beginning of this video, uh, ridiculously rare. And they're a really cool, uh, really cool piece of legally registered NFA, destructive device, uh, military history. You know, uh, for the shooter, this thing is a live gun. Uh, 24 millimeter is small enough that it's not outlandish to make ammunition for if you're if you're active in that sort of thing. Um, it's certainly not a 75 millimeter howitzer. This is the sort of thing that, while big, is actually shootable. So, uh, if you'd like to get into that yourself, and you know, invite me to come shoot it with you, perhaps, <laughs> uh, take a look at the description text below the video. You'll find a link there to Morphe's catalog page. Actually, I'm sorry, you won't, because YouTube doesn't allow links to uh, any place that sells firearms. So instead, you'll find a link to ForgottenWeapons.com, and from that link you will find another link where you can get to Morphe's catalog page on this. That's got their pictures, which includes like a whole list of, of all the accoutrements that come with this. There's a bunch of stuff. You may have seen the muzzle cover that was on the gun at the beginning of the video, and many backpacks. You can equip all of your friends with a backpack full of magazines for this to help you carry the gear. Uh, anyway, that, their uh, price estimate, their description, all that sort of good stuff. So if you do decide to uh, try and make it yours, best of luck, and thanks for watching.